time. Um, so for those that are new or just joining on, welcome. And for those that have been with us for the last few weeks, we are starting a series called Road Trip because we've realized that we were kind of forced to stay indoors because of the virus, but we didn't let that stop us, right? We were able to grow and still grow even if we had to grow in place. And now we feel that the Lord is calling us to go and to also be able to go. And so we had this idea of going on a road trip and experiencing all of what the Lord would have for us as a group. And there's a lot of creative elements that are going to be coming out, especially when we uh, probably starting in February, we're going to be having that. But right now, this the sub this month is doing a checkup. Because before you go on a road trip, you want to do a checkup uh, to make sure that you don't get excited and get ready to go and you have a flat tire or any of those other things. And I was thinking through this uh, in, a, in one of the road trips that I, I took. And if, um, Melissa, whenever you get a chance, you can upload that picture that I, there was a time when Valerie and I were engaged. And through this time, I wanted to take full-time position at a job exit so if, if any of you have ever been to southeast texas this is where it's at i typed in the exact coordinates if you look there i was in the city of chino which is a little bit east from los angeles to uh, the big city of sour lake texas even the name itself is like wow that's uh Interesting name. Population 1,814 people, maybe 16. I might be off by two people. If you look there, this is 23 hours and eight minutes. And at this time, Valerie and I were, so what that meant was I would go and be the pastor of this church by myself while Valerie stayed in Upland next to uh, Chino. And it was one of our long distance relationship portions that we had together. Um, but we knew, hey, this is what the Lord's leading. This is what we got to do. And I decided to take this, this road trip because I had to bring my belongings. And uh, how interesting that I bring in a bright red Camaro in this small town. Uh, hey, you're the new preacher. I'm like, how did you know? And then I figured, oh, okay, it's a small town. <laughs> so if you look here, this is, the, this is pretty much the route that I took. Uh, if any of you have ever driven past, I mean, even from to Phoenix, there's a little bit of uh, desert. But as you go from Phoenix to Tucson, especially Tucson to El Paso, then El Paso to San Antonio, you are driving through desert. I'm telling you. Yes, you can go 80 when you get to Texas. But it took me three days to get there. Um, and I was traveling alone. Realizing this time, like, wow, this is great. First couple hours go by. But when you get to that point when you're driving in the middle of nowhere, you kind of get a little bored. I would make a couple phone calls, and in my phone, the service would drop because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, at other points, I realized my streaming services wouldn't work either because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and so there was a lot of times where I would just be in silence with the windows down because I'm tired of my downloaded music of songs. And so <laughs> I realized how much better this trip would have been with people. Now, if any of you have ever taken a road trip with people, you know that, that it's so much more fulfilling and fun when you're able to do this together. And we could uh, stop the screen share. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, but that's the actual route that I took. Appreciate that. And realizing, man, if Valerie was with me on this ride, it would have, well, what happens when you're on a ride with people? There's fun. It goes by quicker. You're like, wow, where did the time go? Uh, I usually like to, to get involved in spiritual conversations or some rich conversation. And that's usually why I miss my turns and, and miss freeway exits in LA because I'm so focused on the conversation. But I realize trips are better when we're together. Um, and that's really the same in our spiritual journey. So even before we get out there and we just start going with where God has us, we have to ask the question, who are we doing life with? Who, are we, who is with us in this journey as the body of Christ? Because we've heard the phrase before, well, it's just me and Jesus. Yes, there's your personal 
personal relationship with Christ needs to be there. He died for you. You need to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. But the other part of that is that he's given us one another's. It's really hard to love one another, accept one another, and all the other 50 plus one another's when we do that with ourselves. And there's an edification, there's an encouragement, there's challenges, there's, there's other things that we need each other. And that's what we really want to see the well as a young adult's minute traveling together because we can go further with who God has called us to be. Amen. And so what we're going to do now is something a little different. We are going to go into a breakout room because we have to get to know each other a little better if we're going to travel together, right? So we're going to take a few of these squares and put them in breakout rooms. So, uh, so that, it, was, it was fun. So I'm glad that we could do that. But I do want to go into a little bit of teaching, a shortened lesson, because we did have some time to go through that together. Um, and if you want to turn, I'm just going to switch this around. If you want to turn in the word to first Corinthians, we're going to be in first Corinthians 12 for the remainder of this. Um, anybody know right off the bat what that is? First Corinthians 12. Spiritual gifts. Yes. You could say it with an exclamation point, right? Spiritual gifts. No. <laughs> you, you are correct. So, um, and with that, with spiritual gifts, I really want to focus not on the specific gifts themselves, because yes, there is a time to do that. Um, but really, I want to focus on the body, because as we found out in our breakout rooms, it was fun and actually quite difficult at first to find out how many things we have in common. But also there's things that are unique, different, that we wouldn't know with one another. And it's very similar in that way as we as the body of Christ. If you look around at your screen, many of us come from different backgrounds, ethnicities, different upbringings, different Christian traditions or denominations, but we all still serve the same God and we all are part of the body of Christ. So I want to read just this first part of 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12. I'm just going to read to verse 14. It says, just as a body, though, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now this, just to, just to go along with this, when it says that we are many parts, but one body of Christ, we can look at this in a couple contexts. One is that this is the universal church. This is the church of the capital C, that we are all part of the body of Christ together. But we can even look at it in a local context, such as even within the well here, that you are all also part of this body, helping in some way, shape or form for the young adults ministry. Um, just briefly, just thinking through some of the things that come to mind is um, that there are still, we, we started a few life groups last year in 2020 there's a few life groups that are still going strong even this year. Uh, both their names start with an M and N and an A, Melissa's squared. So they have life groups that are still going on. Um, that's part of that body and using their gifts and skills for that. Uh, yesterday, there was guys that, that met and said, you know what? We can't meet physically. We're still going to meet virtually. And then they took the next step and said, technological challenges, <laughs> That's nothing for me. And they called up each other on the phone. So um, that's, that's also being part of the body. We even have, of course, people like behind the scenes uh, just automatically thinking of uh, Yesenia. Are you here? Where's Yesenia? I thought she was here. Oh, there she is. Where she just randomly brought um, those little diary journals to just hand out to people. I mean, that's amazing. Um, and like Tim Margano, who helps edit my church videos every Friday. So big shout out to, uh, to Tim there. Um, I think he might've left, but, um, and then we also have events where we come together and do ministry on the beach for the homeless. And there's so much more that God wants to do in and through all of us that it's, it's so encouraging to see that we all have different gifts, skills, abilities, and talents all for the kingdom. 
Um, not one of us is the same, nor is that what it's supposed to be. Um, and with that, each part I want to say is indispensable, that, that each part is so valuable. And we see that in this passage um, as we continue to read through that. Um, when I use the word indispensable, it means to not, it's not subject to being set aside or neglected. It's absolutely necessary. It's essential. And I want you to think of yourself as that, not only as, as because you belong to Christ and that you're part of the bigger church, but even through this ministry here. Um, let me just read to you the rest of, um, I want to read 15 through 18 here of chapter 12. And I'll continue to expand more on that. But Paul says this, he says, Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not, do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. So it doesn't matter what that foot says. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Praise God, right? That he has a specific plan and purpose for each and every one of you. God is intentional. I loved hearing that in one of the, one of the members in the group shared that this year they want to be more intentional. I love that because that is a character of God. Because he placed us just as he wanted to be. And so I think about that because it's, it's easy to look at somebody and say, man, that person is so gifted. Or I love the way that they speak and I don't have that. Or they just seem so talented or they're musical or everything comes natural to them. I mean, you fill in the blank. We've all been there, right? Now, no lying here. We've all been there. That's right, Christian. I see that. That's, that's just mystifying right there, speaking in tongues and keyboard. Um, but we... We don't need to look at others because it's okay that they would be different than us. Like that other question, they are meant for their purpose because God has intentionally placed them with those gifts, skills, abilities, and talents for this season. But you also have yours. Now there's another temptation too in the body of Christ as we travel and journey together that we may look to the side of us and see somebody that has a similar gift to us but maybe they're more equipped in it. Maybe they're in a more prominent position. Maybe they have a greater degree of gifting. You fill in the blank. But that's also not meant for you to compare because now you're not running your race with your eyes fixed on Christ. You're looking to the right, you're looking to the left, and that's slowing down your run. You are meant to be the best you he created you to become. Amen? We can get a hallelujah and amen for that. You can even shout it muted. I, I believe yeah. I can hear you. There you go. Um, because whether you feel like you're an eye, a foot, even a fingernail, God has a purpose for all of that. We'll go into more of that here. Uh, if we look at the rest of that verse, when it says in verse 18, but in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? It would be kind of gross if, every, if, if there was a giant eyeball. In that analogy, that would be very disturbing. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Going back to the eye, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. There's that word. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. Let me just stop there. Now, when it says the indispensable body parts are the ones we typically don't see, anyone have an idea of what some of those body parts would be just off the top of your head? Yeah, the heart. I mean, how important is the heart? But unless we have a problem with the heart or we feel it, we don't think about it. It's just naturally doing its own thing. Any others? Lungs. That's right. Lungs. Again, a typical natural response unless there's something that's not working right. Last one. Any others? Nope. 
Okay. Appendix. Appendix. Oh man, if if there's something wrong with the appendix, you got to go to the hospital right away, right? Because it can burst. Um, now these are, I mean, the organs, all of your insides are the parts that you don't see, but that doesn't mean it's not important even more so without those that are here on the inside, we, we can't survive. And I thought about this cause I'm like, you know, what's interesting. The dispensable parts, the ones that are ones that we don't need as much like the heart are the ones that we overvalue, right? When we see someone that's been working out, what do we want them to see? We want them to flex. I won't do it now because I don't want to pop your eye out, but we flex and that's actually something we overvalue. We overvalue that, that arm because you can live without an arm. But, and we focus more on seeing if we have the rock hard abs instead of what's inside the stomach, right? Which really matters. And I thought about this in terms of the body of Christ. Well, Jeremy, that's why we have LA Witness is because we're all working together to get fit for Christ spiritually and physically. Amen and amen. But I thought about this from the body of Christ. Naturally, because I'm a pastor, I'm more upfront in the sense of teaching. And I realized that without you, without all of you there, I would actually be teaching to the air. I would be teaching to nobody, right? But we all need each other and we all have different parts, but it's also part of my job to equip, train, and build up the body of Christ because I cannot do it on my own, nor should I. It would actually be a disservice to the body of Christ if I tried to do everything myself. Does that make sense? And so we, we need to figure out ways where we can build each other up, go on this journey together on this road trip. And if you want, you can look at Ephesians 4 that talks about how we are all called to be mature in the body of Christ. And we're supposed to equip the saints. And so when we look at our current churches, just as the capital C, and we look at our nation, and we look at those things, we're like, man, we're not there yet, but we can. Um, we can go there. And so we have to edify one another, and no part is less worthy than another. Because, in fact, the people that are behind the scenes, or even like the one that might be hosting this Zoom meeting right now, is indispensable because without it we wouldn't be able to meet you see so now all of you are the body of christ and each one of you is a part of it and you can you can just declare that over yourself right now and say i am part of the body of christ and i am part of it okay now this is where i want to go into because if you're not sure how you fit then you need to let me know because as i said my job is to make sure that you, we figured that out together and how God's gifted you and where you are in this season so that you can be part of that body because otherwise we have a, we have a hand missing. We have a foot missing. And last time I checked, we need both feet to continue to run the race. So if we're only having one foot, we're going to be limping our way to victory. And I don't think that's how God intended the church to be. But sometimes I think we do. We see ourselves incomplete. And so if you're not sure what your spiritual gifts are, if you're not sure how you can be able to be involved, especially in the well or even in church in general, please let me know. Because um, the other part of what we see here in this passage is that each part is interdependent, meaning that two or more things depend on one another. So going back to 15 and 17, um, we see that the foot can't say, to the hand, I don't belong to the body. It's still part of the body. Everything's dependent. I mean, what happens if the kidney said, hey, you know what? I'm tired. I've been cleaning up around here for years. Let someone else do it. What would happen? Well, <laughs> that's when the body goes haywire. I'm thinking about, for some of you that have been praying for me, I appreciate it. For a week, I've had this strange reaction to this rash that's on my body. It's you can't, I mean, thank God it's not in my face, nowhere visible, but it's targeted. I don't know how many, I would call them rash more than bumps. Maybe there's like 50 or 60 of these irregular looking rashes that are mostly on my sides and a little bit on my chest. And I thought about that. I said, well, 
is this a reaction to something going, something else going on in my body? Because my body is interdependent. Now, I did think it could be something external like, well, did I switch detergent and this is a reaction? <laughs> that could very well be the case, but nothing's new. So I'm waiting for the doctor uh, to go to the dermo to send the pictures of the dermo to figure out what that is. So I appreciate your prayers and that. Sorry for the uh, tangent there. But it got me thinking like, well, our body functions interdependently. Um, how much more so do we need to think of the body of Christ as interdependent, not independent? Unfortunately, our American culture and our society uh, really relishes us to think that the more mature you are, the more independent you are. Now, yes, there is some truth to that, that for some guys, yes, we need to, we need to maybe get our acts together or we need to grow up, right? But where does it ever come in society or where does it say in scripture that we need to become independent from God as we get more mature? That would be incorrect. If anything, the more mature we get in God, the more dependent we need to be upon him. And say so much again. Mm. That's right. So <laughs> I'll do that just for you, Raven. The more uh, mature we become in God, the more dependent we are upon him, because that's a fact that, we need more of God. And it's also, we need to see God move also in our group, in each other's lives. So we need that dependency with one another. Um, and so just think about this. If, if I just, if my mouth decided to stop speaking right now, um, and you wouldn't be able to receive the message, but all of it's interconnected if we go back to the body. In fact, speaking is only possible when the brain, the nerves, tongue, jaw, lips, let's see, lungs, diaphragm, heart, veins, arteries, capillaries are all working together for that specific purpose. Therefore, if, if Paul is using the analogy of the body in 1 Corinthians and saying that we are supposed to be that connected just as a body is, that's how we are supposed to be, mutual dependency also upon one another. Um, and so if... So think about it in light of that. Paul wouldn't give this analogy if that's not what we're supposed to strive towards. Is that against our, our culture? Yes. Is that against our upbringing? Yes. Is that against the flesh? Yes. Because I want to, in some ways, say, hey, I made it on my own. I'm a self-made man. But really, I want to be able to say, no, God is my source of strength in all things. I have the body of Christ that we can edify and encourage one another. And we're in this together. Um, Melissa, can you, Chan, can you read first Peter four, 10 to 11 for us? Cause this talks about gifts that we all have. Um, first Peter four, 10 to 11. Um, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This verse clearly says that each and every one of us have at least one gift. Every one. So you can't look and say, you know, Jennifer is, has all these gifts and I don't have any. Can't say, well, Natalie, she has all these gifts. No, we all have gifts and we are to use them for the glory of God, but to also serve one another. So if we're in a place where we're not using our gift, it's not only not serving the purpose for God, but it's also not having the body be whole. And we all need one another in our spiritual gifts. And if you want to know more about that, we can talk later. And I know Melissa Chan just finished up a, a great series on spiritual gifts. So you can also reach out to her group with Raven on that as well. Um, but we all have these gifts and abilities and talents, personalities, everything that can all be used for God's kingdom. Uh, I love this true story that talks about this interdependency here where it says uh, several years ago, 
there was two students that graduated from Chicago Kent College of Law. Um, the highest ranking student in the class was a blind man named Overton. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And when he received his honor, he insisted that half the credit should go to his friend, Kasberizak. I butchered the name, but Kasberizak. Now, they had met one another in school. Check this out. When the armless Mr. Karasvac had guided the blind Mr. Overton down a flight of stairs. Isn't it? Wow. Did you get that? Mr. Karasvac had no arms, but guided the blind Mr. Overton down a flight of stairs. So this acquaintance ripened into a friendship, and it's just a beautiful example of interdependence. So the blind man carried the books, which the armless man read aloud in their study, and that their individual deficiency was each compensated for the other. I love that because, um, oh, and after their graduation, they planned to practice law together. Like, what? Man, I, I, I want to go to Chicago and figure this, meet these guys. Um, but it really shows that no believer by themselves is complete. Uh, and I love that even though they had individual def uh, deficiencies together, it was compensated for. And actually, they were strengthened. In fact, they were the best of the class. Um, and so we all have, so don't focus, even if you feel like you have a glaring weakness or a frailty or something that bothers you, that is not what your focus should be on. Your focus should be on the strength that, that Christ has given you and pray that others will help you overcome those weaknesses. So like, for example, um, those that know me well can attest to this and poor Val it happened today too. For some reason, my mind just, I can remember facts. I can remember Bible stories. It's like registered in a different frame of memory. I, I don't know. But when it comes to basic things, I'm just not there. Uh, my keys, I'm always asking, Val, honey, where's my keys? Where's this? Where's my cell phone? Have you seen my wallet? Like the basic things. I just, I literally have no recollection. Um, and even today, uh, I knew Val was leaving to go to the Inland Empire. That is a fact in my mind. But what do I do? I take the wrong car. Like, I knew I took the wrong car. So she's like, why did you take the car? I'm like, I really don't know. Like, so, <laughs> so, I, so I'm grateful that. We haven't, we haven't found a solution yet to my memory loss. So I'm still working on it, but it's still a continual weakness that comes up in me. And so you could pray for Val to have grace and understanding and mercy and all the other fruits of the spirit that need to happen. But also that in our relationship, thankfully she's able to still, maybe after shaking her head a few times, she's able to help me by saying, oh, I put your wallet over here next time. You see, helping me, with my weakness. And so we all have to be in a place, we all have different weaknesses and we all have different strengths, but we're in this together. And so there might be a time where we do share those things. And my hope and vision for the well, especially for 2021, is not only that we grow in number, that's, that's a great thing, but there's also that saying, you can be a thousand miles wide and only an inch deep. Have you ever heard that? A church can be a thousand miles wide and an inch deep. I don't want that to happen because that means there's no depth. That means there's no real establishment, no root that's in Christ and with each other. There has to be a connectedness that's rooted. And as we looked at continuing to grow, we also now want to go, but we're going to do that together. So there has to be an investment in each other's lives. And Make sure you look at this and read it on your own time, but to look at Acts 2, 42 to 47, when the early church got together, look what they did. There was a devotion to the word. They're meeting in each other's houses all the time. Their lives are transformed. Miracles are done. People's needs were met. Can we get to that point? Or are we saying, well, I don't want to invade that person's privacy. You know, I just don't want to bug them or... You know, they have their own thing. Or is that really cultural? Which one's biblical? Which one's cultural? Because last time I checked, we're also 
called to live biblical. And if that means changing our culture, so be it. And we, and it looks like the body of Christ is that because it's interdependent. And lastly, it's also interconnected. Um, I'll read the verse of the rest of verses 24 and 26. Uh, it says this, and the parts that are un, uh, unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need a special treatment. This is it here. But God has put the body together, g- giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And so, as we know, in terms of food context, and this week I've been really bad, man. I mean, I've been, I've been eating lots of brownies and chocolate just came to my door, literally. Um, and I got to say, for those of you that gave me that, I appreciate it. A lot of it's gone or on its way. Um, but I can't, I mean, that's because it was my birthday. I can't keep doing that, right? Because what goes in my body uh, and eating the right portions and eating the right food, exercising and getting enough sleep. These don't just help one certain part of the body. It's interconnected. It helps the whole body. It doesn't just help our arm muscles. I mean, we could drink more protein maybe, but it also helps our digestive system, the whole body. And the same way what's good for the church as a whole will also be good for us. Uh, even if it's not easy for us, that what each of us does for the health of the body of Christ is vital and needed. Um, if how many of you have ever had um, a toothache before, right? Where it just like bugs you, or maybe wisdom teeth coming out, right? We had somebody there just got wisdom teeth pulled. Now, this is a small piece of the body, and you're like, this thing is affecting my whole mood. Like, I can't think, I have headaches. All I keep thinking about is the pain, right? Or if you're like me, because I can't show you now. But the way I walk, yes, it is distractingly painful. That is true. But I walk, I guess I walk kind of like this, not exactly straight, which is bad when you're turning corners and you got your little pinky toe and I just hit that corner. And now I know my pinky toe exists because the pain is so present and now I'm on the floor. But in the same way, regardless of who the person is, in this context, people that are on here, people that haven't made it tonight, maybe people we haven't seen in a while, they're all part of the body of Christ. And that if one is in pain, we're all in pain. If one rejoices, we all rejoice. And, you know, just I uh, appreciate everyone that reached out to, to Joseph and to his sister, uh, Joanna. Um, as uh, Joseph, I know you're on now. Um, you know, that's that's a, it's a difficult thing when there's a transition like that, but to be there, to come alongside. And even if you don't have the right words, even if you're not sure what to say, but just to, to let that person know that you're there with them, that's part of being the family of Christ, of the body of Christ. And um, it's amazing that you're able to do that for Joseph. So I saw that this week in that end, but then I also saw it in the other end where, um, you know, a lot of you guys, there was, I didn't say anything, but a lot of you guys came out of your way to um, really make me feel special for my birthday. I mean, that was a way of an example of just honoring me, I guess, just for being alive. So I appreciate that because I didn't do anything to earn it. Um, it. It wasn't even a special number. I won't say what it is, but it's the big two five. So <clears throat> yeah, it's just way to be alive. <laughs> That's right. So I really see us striving to be that body of Christ. And I want to really commend all of you for that. But, and I know that there's more that we can do together. So if you're in that place, you're like, well, I'm not sure where I fit in the body. That's okay. We've all, I've been at that point before. I want to help you through that. If you're in a place where you're in pain in the body, that's also okay. You can express that and we can come alongside you. If you have victories and celebrations, we want to rejoice with you through that because that's why we're here and we are always better and stronger as a unit together than we are solo i mean in in any situation and so um 
I really saw that a lot happen in 2020, looking forward to 2021 and what God will continue to use through each and every one of you. And if you want to find out other ways to, to, to do that, please let me know. What we can do is we can pray and we'll just have a short, um, we'll just have a short breakout room um, of one, one question. And if you want to choose, for those that want to hang out longer to discuss, you can, but then we'll let you guys go. But let me pray for each and every one of us um, through that, because um, as we learn, the body of Christ and being a part of that is essential. Um, it's indispensable and we're all connected together. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you for this time that we can gather together as this group. And even through the means of, of this technology that although we can't meet physically, we can meet together uh, virtually, God. We thank you for that because this is part of us being interconnected in some way, shape or form. And although it may not be the ideal situation, Lord, um, even looking back, I'm grateful for all the times that we were able to grow in place through difficult circumstances. And some of us are still in that. And some of us are wondering how we fit or where we are or what's next and all those questions. I pray, Lord, for each one that is thinking those, that you will remind them that they're not alone in this journey, that I know myself and many others are here to be able to help walk alongside each person so that we can be the body of Christ, as Ephesians 4 says, um, to be equipped and matured as the body of Christ. And so we're on our way, Lord. We need, obviously, your help. We need, we need you to teach us and show us how to make this work, Lord. Um, and, of course, we want everyone to feel welcome and connected. So show us how to do that and give us wisdom as to each person and how they can thrive in their relationship with you and with others. Because how much more so is it greater when we travel on this journey of road trip together and not alone? So we thank you, Lord God, and in Jesus' name, amen.